Hello friends and welcome to edupediaworld.com, your destination to online education. Friends, today we shall start with the same topic, the types of elements of the modern periodic table, with the subtopic, inner transition elements, as the representative elements and the transition elements we have already covered and discussed in the previous sessions. Please refer to these topics with the related videos. Thank you. So we shall start with the inner transition elements. Friends, whenever we see or hear anything, whether it is related to your subject, your topic, your real life, we always try to find up some many common queries like why it is happening, what is it, how it happened, who did it, and when it happened, etc. So, in this session, let's find and clarify these common queries related to this topic. That is, first question that comes in our mind is what? What are the inner transition elements? Friends, before starting with this topic, let me give you a short brief note. That is, the transition elements which covers between 3rd to 12th group and the inner transition elements, they are collectively called the transition metals. Just because the element present in these series and groups behaves and shows the metallic character. Now let's understand what are the inner transition elements. The inner transition elements have two series, lanthanide series and actinide series, which has been written in the bottom of the table. You can see here in this table, we have the actinide and lanthanide series. According to IUPAC, IDE, that is the suffix of these two series are basically written for the anions. So it has been changed now with the lanthanoids and actinoids. So the lanthanoid series consists of 14 elements, cerium through lutetium, that is 58 to 71 atomic number, which immediately follows lanthanium, that is the first element of the series, that's why they are called the lanthanoids. Similarly, the actinoid series contains 14 elements, thorium through laurentium as the atomic number 19 to 103 and the element were among the last to be discovered and placed in the periodic table and many of the actinoid series do not occur naturally but they are actually synthesized through the nuclear reactions. We have these two series, lanthanoid series and actinoid series. They are also called the F block series. The lanthanoid series are the F block, that is the 4F subshell block series, and actinoid is the 5F subshell block series, that is the outermost electron which fills the shell is the 5F in actinoid and 4F in the lanthanoid. So now let's understand the definition of the inner transition elements which says that the inner transition elements are the two series of elements known as lanthanides and actinides that is the lanthanoids and actinoids now. They are shown below in the main table you can see they belong to period 6 and 7 of the transition elements. They are also called the F block element series. Now let's understand why are they called inner transition elements. As the definition of inner transition elements is somewhat imprecise. As some include lanthanides and actinium to give 15 elements in these each series. If we take the point of view of the electronic structure, the lanthanoids are characterized by the gradual filling of O4F subshell we just discussed and the lanthanides and actinides by filling the 5F subshell. So they are collectively called the F block elements and these elements however the outermost DNF subshell lies close together in energy levels which leads to some irregularity in the electronic structure which gives rise to the irregularity in the electronic configuration of each of the elements. That is, it turn leads to some uncertainty about whether to place the element in the 
according to electronic configuration in the transition elements or the inner transition elements that the lanthanum and actinium have no electron in their F subshell and they best fit in the group 3 and the next that is the cerium and thorium also have no F electron but are considered the part of inner transition element series and the common arrangement is to place the inner transition metals between group 3 to group 4 as you can see here so the best knowledge of answer is that they are called inner transition elements because of their placement in the periodic table and due to the electronic configuration of each of the element present in these series that is the F series now friends let's understand what are the differences we have in the transition elements and inner transition elements before going through these difference let's understand and uh, let's continue talking about the periodic table and more specifically let's talk about the properties of transition and inner transition elements we know that our classification of elements in the modern periodic table is from metal that is from left to right that is from metals to non-metals and in between we have the transition elements which actually subdivided into outer transition elements and inner transition elements as we have the outer transition elements that is the from group 3 to group 12 and inner transition elements are the 6th and the 7th period of the same groups that is if I go on precisely we know that the d orbital maximum hold 10 valence electron and f orbital holds maximum of 14 so these elements both the transition metals and inner transition metals exhibits the property of other metals that is we can see in the periodic table which means that they are a good conductors of electricity they have a nice lustrous quality of them they are malleable they are soft etc so across a period in the transition metals and inner transition metal remember the periods are the rows so going across the rows there's a little variation in atomic size electronegativity and ionization energy which actually differs the physical property of the elements in the same series that is the electronic configuration of various elements that falls within these two groups and so we can say that the electronic configuration I'm referring to is the fact that if there are unpaired electron it causes the physical property to be a little bit different from the family so the transition metal can lose 2s electron to become plus 2 ions and they can also form multiple oxidation state so it's sometime different from the s block and p block elements as they usually have one oxidation state that we they prefer that the element prefer within the transition metals throughout they can form numerous oxidation state for instance for example vanadium you can take that example as which is having atomic number of 23 and can have the oxidation state of 2 3 4 and 5 that is plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 and plus 5 and so all of those different oxidation state if you were to make a solution of vanadium you could know that the oxidation state was changing because the color of solution will also change drastically now if I talk about the transition metal can also exhibit the metallic property which we have already discussed and if we compare the same with the inner transition metals that if the electronic configuration we have the paired electron then we can call that diamagnetic and if you have actually the unpaired electron we call them paramagnetic that's why iron cobalt and nickel are located here and here and here as these elements are what we call it a ferromagnet that so they form the permanent magnet so they are unpaired electron kind of a line up in a pole which common in contact with the magnetic field and they remain in that form which causes them to form a per permanent magnet now if we talk about the inner transition uh, metals which are the elements 
located at the bottom that have two periods, period 6 the lanthanoid series and period 7 the actinoid series. So with the lanthanoid series there is a little variation in the properties and in the nature with the kind of all mixed together. So it is very difficult to separate. Then we have the actinoid series which are the period 7th located at the very bottom of the periodic table and these are you can say the radioactive elements so only three of them actually exist in nature and the other are all synthetic elements so the synthetic ones are the starting here from uranium which is atomic number 92 and so we call these elements from uranium on to the end they are the transuranium series and so those are all accelerated and things that nature and that is more on the periodic table so the basic difference is that the inner transition metals are the synthetic they are also called the rare rare earth metals because they are not they are rarely found in the nature and the second difference is they, they have the D block element and the inner transition elements are the F block with the two series 4F and 5F. Now friends, let's understand the point of differences between the two series that is the lanthanide series and actinide series. We also call them lanthanoid and actinoid nowadays. As a lanthanoid series all the lanthanoid series are closely rem remnants in the lanthananium. The valence electron fills in the 4F orbital. They occur in the 3 oxidation state, that is the plus 3 oxidation state. They are widely used in lasers. They are most commonly used in the production of the sunglasses. And the ionic radii decreases through the period, that is from left to right, the ionic radii decreases. Now we shall discuss the actinoid series that is they are the radioactive elements. These metal tarnish in air that is they vanish in air. The outermost electrons settle in 4F in the lanthanoid and now in the 5F orbital in the actinide series. They have plus 3, plus 4, plus 5, plus 6 oxidation state whereas in the lanthanoid we have plus 3 oxidation state. They have number of isotopes and lanthanoids don't have much of the oil isotopes. The lastly they directly combine with non-metals as we know that they all are the metals. It is different from them being natural and synthetic as they are metals they basically directly combine with non-metals to form the chemical reaction. So friends if I conclude the properties of all these inner transition elements I will say that they are heavy metals with a high melting and boiling point. They show variable valencies. They form colored ions with just because of different ionization energies and the oxidation state they can occur. The actinoid series having the elements with the radioactive nature. Friends by this I end up my inner transition elements. Now we shall discuss the inert gases or noble gases in the next session. Thank you.